Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With me today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you. How are you this morning, Dr. Paul? Doing very well. I want to talk today a little bit about a friend of ours. Wished we could do more for him. Yeah. Hopefully, us talking about it might help. And that's Julian Assange, who's been viciously mistreated by various governments, but probably more so by our government than anybody else. And if you're looking for justice, don't go to our Justice Department. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you know, Sessions won't help him, and Pompeo is not going to help him. As a matter of fact, they detest Assange because he's telling the truth about what's going on. So it's a real tragedy. But today there was an article by Consortium News, a very good article, a summary of what uh, uh, Assange has gone through. And he's six years in prison, and it gets worse. Uh, there for a while it was a room, and he got to talk and visit with people and, and uh, communicate and have email. Nothing. It's it's virtually total isolation. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way it's been described is tortuous, and um, his health is uh, questionable right now. So it's really a sad situation. And when you look at this, in this article that just came out, it says pleading for humanitarian asylum for Julian Assange is worthwhile reading. So if uh, people want to follow up on this, because it's a real good summary of what he's gone through, and it is is the six years that this is happening. uh, And yet, um, you know, it shouldn't be that complicated because from my viewpoint, uh, he's a journalist and he's been mistreated. And it's interesting that uh, there's not too many people in this country going to bat for him, but media everywhere are sort of paying attention to this because they thought, well, yeah, he's a bad guy and we don't want to do anything to help him. We're not going to go out on a limb. But then really, what they're thinking is, well, maybe we ought to be a little bit cautious because if they apply those rules to us, you know, the ordinary media, uh, who knows who's going to be in charge of the Department of Justice and how they might come down hard. And, you know, Obama's administration used that as a tool, and uh, any, all administrations aren't bashful about that. But this, if, uh, if they don't straighten this out and Assange gets a fair deal one of these days, uh, this could be very detrimental or add more fuel to the fire of uh, of undermining uh, an independent media and not encouraging real journalism. And that is our frustration. The friends that we have are generally good journalists and they get a bum rap. And that's what I think is happening here. And a free society depends on knowing what the government does. That's just a basic fact. 2,823 days he spent under house arrest in the uh, Ecuadorian embassy in London. Uh, He's afraid to go out because he feels he he will be arrested by the UK government on charges of skipping bail, which is a minor, minor charge. I think there's just a fine involved uh, because the, 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 the charges that originally were against him have been dropped. Sweden dropped all the charges against him. He's, he's not facing any charges. He's just facing a little fine for, for skipping. But the reality is that the U.S. wants him bad. And as soon as he steps out of that embassy, you better believe the U.K. government's going to gonna nab him. They're going to send him to Alexandria, Virginia, and put him in another cage and do a show trial and he'll be disappeared. And uh, Ecuador came to his rescue, so to speak, you know, six years ago and allowed him to go into the embassy for asylum. Uh, but then there's a new president that's not quite so friendly, and uh, there's even more pressure than ever for him taking the risk of ever trying to get out of there. And I, I keep thinking, you know, in various areas, in the financial arena, in the foreign policy arena, we are tough, we're the bullies, we are intimidating, and for the most part, most of the countries of the world roll over because of what harm we can do to them, whether it's whether it's trade or financial or whatever. But here it is in this justice system, they're rolling over in a m- many ways. They say, you know, if Ecuador really, you know, wanted to give them asylum and bring them home, they all of a sudden say, no, we're not going to let you do this. And, and that's the British. And the British aren't going to be civil libertarians all yeah. of a sudden. I mean, Last they're times. going to be part of the problem. And uh, so, so it's, it's getting, I guess, more desperate because it's been going on so long. Uh, Assange's health is questionable. So uh, we may make a suggestion at the end of this, uh, try to encourage people to help out. But it really is is aggravating because uh, if it was, if it were only to get him into a court and have justice, 
And if he thought he had true justice, he'd be there because uh, journalists generally have been protected, but not in this day and age. Uh, we've spent a lot of time last year even talking about the journalists who got into trouble, you know, uh, by telling the truth. Uh, and the old saying goes that uh, truth is treason and an empire lies because you can't, you can't tell the truth about what government is doing. And uh, so many have uh, been involved and we've identified them and visited with so many people who have been unjustly uh, persecuted, you know, because they wanted to tell the truth about government, whether it had to do with torture or starting wars or whatever. And you know, Mike Pompeo, who is now the Secretary of State, he was a CI director last year, when he called WikiLeaks a non-state hostile intelligence service, uh, you know, and, and they are viciously uh, desiring to get him to shut down WikiLeaks. But what does WikiLeaks do? It's a publishing house. It publishes government secrets. It publishes things that the government doesn't want you to see. Well, that happens every day. Open up the Washington Post, click on CNN, any news site, any website. Mm -hmm. Government sources tell us that dot, dot, dot. It happens every single day. So as you suggested earlier on, uh, the, the media in the U.S. would write to stand up and pay attention because they want to attack Assange for telling us the things the government doesn't want us to know, which is the job of the media in the first place. This article is good because it points out how many people have gone to bat for him, but American people don't hear anything about it. And I want to mention one, uh, one group, uh, and I'm going to read a little bit from the consortium article, because uh, once again, there are organizations that we might not be uh, super uh, supportive of, like the UN's uh, Human Rights Group. You yeah. know, they came out and hit defense. But when they're telling the truth, we ought to listen to it. But I want to, want to read this uh, short statement. Uh, it comes from the Organization of American States, of which Ecuador is a member of. And they're talking about how this process should work. And I think they changed some rules or clarified some rules on how it should be handled. And uh, it goes like this. The Organization of American States, uh, Inter-American Court of Human Rights, sent out a ruling that was virtually unnoticed by the U.S. news media. Uh, the organization said, quote, It is the duty of nations to allow for the passage of successful asylum seekers from embassies to the mainland territory of the state that has granted an individual asylum which is clearly, he is a, under their, these rules, American, uh, you, you know, Organization of American States, uh, that he, he can go to Ecuador. Yeah. And, um, of course, I, I think the thing that I, it bothers me the most is the intimidation, how easy it is for us to intimidate. But then uh, I bet that from their viewpoint, yeah, you talk big, but, uh, you know, they can come down hard on us and, and they can ruin us and, you know, this sort of thing. And, and they're, they're sort of dependent on us. Some of them are dependent on money. And they certainly uh, listen to the threats that we give them. And then you get guys like Pompeo up there uh, with his arrogance. And uh, they, they do feel intimidated. But, you know, just Justice seems to be the least of their interests. You know, there, there seems to be none. That's why I think this article is important, because it's well done. And there are some people out there, but we still have to try to uh, stir up as much interest as possible, uh, whether it's for him or uh, Ed, Edward Snowden. For yeah. Edward Snowden, uh, Snowden, to, you know, has has serious problems, too. He's, he's probably not as, quite as bad off as uh, Assange is, locked in a room. I mean, this, this has been prison. So ho hopefully uh, we can help call attention to this serious matter. And what do we know thanks to WikiLeaks, thanks to their brave publishing of, of, of documents, of information? We know the truth about Afghanistan, the horrible war that the U.S. was fighting there, has, has been fighting there. We know about Iraq. We know about uh, the wanton slaughter of people in Iraq. We know about what's happened in Guantanamo. We know all of the U.S. diplomatic cables. We know the shenanigans that the State Department has been up to for years. One of those cables, if you remember, was a 2006 cable outlining how the U.S. can overthrow the Syrian government, which eventually became the Assad must go plan from 2011. We're learning all the things that the government does in our name. The Vault 7 files told us about CIA cyber warfare, how the CIA can do a cyber attack and mask it to look like a different government. These are CIA internal documents telling us this. These are things that it's critical in a free society to know that what our government is doing. They're doing a public service. You know, what, what's hard for me to do is judge uh, the seriousness compared to back when. Because 
Governments have always been involved. We've been involved way back in, in these things going on. But right now, I just sort of sense that it's worse than ever, especially because of, of this uh, terrible mess with uh, the, the charges with Russia Gate yeah. and, and this sort of thing. And then they're tying Assange into this. And uh, it's just uh, that... It, it encourages people to distrust government. That's the only thing good coming of this, because governments have been uh, very, um, very, very untrustworthy for a long time. But it's becoming more apparent. But it's more politicized and more anger. That bothers me a bit, because who knows what's going to come of it. But it's all mixed in, uh, because they don't seek truth. Uh, it's not that anybody has a perfect knowledge of truth and they have a monopoly over it, but that's what the goal ought to be. People ought to be willing to do it. And if you've shown that uh, we think A, B, C, and somebody says to you, say, say, Ron, C isn't quite right, we should be listening to that. But we should always have one precise goal, and that is knowing knowing the truth. And uh, as, uh, as Mencken said, the person who seeks truth is the most dangerous man there is to government. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, like you said, the problem for Assange right now is he's caught up in this Russia gate. Uh, Mueller can't find every, anything. He can't find any evidence of collusion. He's going on 15-year-old uh, financial uh, charges against uh, Bonifert. He can't find anything leading to, to, to collusion. So what does he do? He hones in on Assange. He hones in on WikiLeaks, accuses them of colluding with the Russians to release Hillary's emails. Uh, Right after they muzzle him, in March they muzzled Assange, he can't speak for himself, and so they're piling these scenes on him, still with no evidence whatsoever there was any kind of relationship between the Russian government. And in fact, WikiLeaks completely denies the Russian government or any Russian state actor as being the source of those emails. What, all we, what fascinates me as well is uh, his status as a citizen. You'd think he was an American citizen who had a a daily newspaper here and we had a lot of involvement but he's an international journalist of course he appeals to you know through the internet he appealed to a lot of Americans but he um, uh, he got asylum so he is I think a citizen of uh, Ecuador oh, yeah, to, to agree but he's an Australian here we have an Australian journalist who publishes a lot of things it annoys our government and so right now we are the dictators we run the empire so it will be our justice the system that determines that no matter what they want to do even if they start listening to some of this reason and let him just just let him go home but australia hasn't been the great defender of him either because yeah, they we pulled put, his passport yeah <laughs> we put pressure on them yeah. but ecuador seemed to have been the most open that uh why why is it well i know why it is because they can't stand the truth and that is the whole thing when they truth about governments are known and then the people aren't very happy. People aren't very happy because they're starting to know what's going on. I think that's going to get much worse because the system is, is not a viable system. The foreign policy is not viable and uh, the economic policy isn't viable. And this just, justice system is one of the worst things going on in this country. Look how many years we've talked about, you know, the injustices about how people prosecute the war on drugs yeah. and, and, and now with, uh, uh, with the Mueller investigation and what our Department of Justice does, our FBI and CIA. I mean, there's no evidence that they have one lick of honesty involved. I mean, uh, it's probably not total. It isn't total, but I'll tell you what, the leadership of those organizations, just like the leadership of political parties, you know, uh, every, every Republican, every Democrat doesn't go along with the, what the leadership says, but the leadership position, and I noticed that was true in Congress too. If you got into a leadership position, you were not an independent thinker. You were belong to the deep state and they raise the money for you. You got your chairmanships and you got to be speaker and different things like this. So uh, it's, it's a system that undermines any truth. And this is, the, of course, the argument for minimal government yeah. because uh, the bigger the government is, the more corrupt it's likely to be. Well, you hit the nail on the head with empire uh, because the absurdity of the charges against Assange, if he does indeed have a sealed indictment, grand jury indictment, which is suspected, the charge is espionage. How can you commit espionage against a country in which you're not a citizen? You know, it's just so absurd. Uh, no one has ever been tried on, on these charges. And the idea that a journalist is tried for espionage who's not an American uh, really is, is a dangerous, dangerous thing. But I, I would just uh, close out a little bit by telling our viewers, 
You've got to get involved. If you care about the United States, if you care about a free press, if you care about helping truth tellers, whistleblowers, and brave publishers, you've got to get involved. You've got to write to your congressman. You've got to demand that they put pressure on the State Department, on the administration, if there is an indictment, to, to get rid of it. Uh, President Trump has said a hundred times on the campaign trail, I love WikiLeaks, I w love WikiLeaks. Now that he's president, he has the power to do something. He needs to tell Pompeo and Sessions, just shut up about this whole thing. This is a journalist who needs to be pardoned. Uh, and together we can be active. There are active groups. Joe Loria, who is the publisher, editor-in-chief of Consortium News, they do a vigil every week uh, on the Internet, on Twitter, uh, in support of Julian Assange. Get involved. Tell your neighbors and friends. We can make a difference about this. Daniel, very good, and I just urge people to pay attention to uh, Daniel's advice. And I find it very tedious and, and difficult, frustrating, because we do feel very small and end up and we don't have uh, much clout. Uh, in the age of uh, the um, Internet, you think we would have more, but uh, I still look toward the optimistic uh, uh, viewpoint that, uh, you know, ideas are hard to stop. If you have ideas and truth, no matter how powerful the government is, finally it, it, will, it will prevail. And, but the frustration level can get pretty high, and I think that's where we are. But it is sad, and I truly believe that you can't stop ideas, you can't stop truth by governments uh, lying and by armies. That ideas will permeate, and they will move around, and, uh, and they, they can't be stopped. So we have to work on that, but we have to participate in it and try to encourage it. Because the more we do, the faster it is that we correct the situation, the slower we are and the less enthusiasm there is, uh, you know, the worse it'll be. And uh, articles like we were quoting from today, they're on the internet, they're out there, and there's a lot of mess and a lot of lying out there too. But uh, these articles still can be done. So spreading the message of liberty and trying to explain to people that it is the interest only of empires to lie about what government is doing. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.